Yeah, you can't come on my show and asking me where's my guy. You got to tell me which guy when we got nothing but guys on today. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. I need to do something here before we get started. So everybody, hold on for a second. I'm going to do this right now before we bring in the man of the hour, the hero of the day. Let me do something here. Hold on. I need to say something before we get started, and I'm going to read it off of this card. Uh oh, hold on a second. Before we get started, if not, we'll reboot. Can everybody hear me or no? Hello, hello, hello. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Uh, Anastasia, Anne, can you hear me or no? Yes, no, everybody. Let me know in the comments. Can you hear me? Can everybody hear me? No? Okay. All right. All right. Okay. So somebody told me they couldn't hear me. So I was just double checking before we get Leon in here. We're going to get Leon, but I have to read something and then I need to get to Leon. And because I don't want to waste time with me, uh, but I want to do this. Uh, everybody, this is what I want to say. I'm looking at Kelly McDowell.79. Kelly McDowell.70. Kelly McDowell.79. So, Kelly, make sure you send me out a little wave there uh, if you hear, if you're still here. So, Kelly McDowell79, I want to right now apologize to you in real time on social media because. I noticed after it was brought to my attention, I actually call you Kelly McDonald in, in one of the shows. So I just want to apologize to you for getting your name wrong. And I think I said it more than once uh, is what I found. Uh, so I want to apologize to you. You will forever be uh, the lady that I actually apologized in real time. And I just had wanted you to know that uh, I will never call you Kelly McDonald. OK, Kelly McDonald. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, so I'll never do that. So anyhow, enough of me. Let's get to this. We're going to have a long show today. So I'll buckle in. We're going to talk about a lot. Let's get Leon in right now. <laughs> I had a lot to do there for a second there. Yeah. I <laughs> Sorry. Everyone. What's up, man? Can you hear me? Are we all good? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, I can only see the top of your bottom of your head. Can yeah, you? yeah. Let, let me give my let me get my peanut head in here for a second. You do that right there for a second. Uh, oh. So we're all good. We all see each other. Get itself in there. I love that. I mean, I love your setup that you got behind you there. Well, yeah, I'm working on it. I started doing. It. I moved in here six years ago, but I'm about to trying to get me a house or condo so I can move out and yeah. really all my military stuff up. You know. Okay. Uh, how many years uh, with the military? Thirty-two. I joined at seventeen. I retired at forty-eight. Wow. So I joined at, at 17, June of 1983. I went to boot camp. I was 18. Um, wow. I retired in 2015, August 7th. When it, when it comes to your life, there are things that people don't know, don't understand, but will be surprised maybe to hear. They don't know, they don't understand, or right. they'll be surprised to hear. Yeah, we're going to start with, we're, we're going to start with the first one. Okay, let's go. They don't know. So what is it about you that you have not shared on your page, which I can't see too much. You ain't shared because <laughs> you shared a lot. I told you, I just told you, we were talking a little bit before the show. I, I've been watching you for three days, man. It's all up here. I don't <laughs> think I've ever had another guest. I watched your stuff over and over so much in my head. Uh, so wh what is there about you that people don't know? Well, that you want to that you want to share right now. All right, so I, I want to share this because um, people don't know how some narcissists are, right? How they really feel. Mm -hmm. But I was a very jealous man, and I won't say that I was jealous of other men. But you know, when when they complimented my one, I can yeah, you know what? Other when other men would compliment my girlfriend or my ex wife, and she would tell me about it, I would get upset because I wasn't complimenting her. I wasn't saying those things to her. I didn't see those things in her. And I felt like, man, how did this dude see this in my girlfriend or my wife, ex-wife, and I couldn't see it. And then when when, it, when I saw that it made her happy and she would say, you know, so and such, such and such complimented me on my hair or my 
body parts or whatever on my lipstick. Right. And mm -hmm. I would get offended. I would get mad. I would get jealous because I didn't see those things in her because I was always concentrating on, you know, physical things that I liked or that I didn't see in her that somebody else saw. Right. So right. it takes a real man to notice things in a woman yeah. outside of the, the, the obvious the, things. The physical. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, didn't, I never looked deeper into the women that I was that I was dating or to my ex-wife. I didn't see the beauty. I just saw the physical stuff that appealed to me, that appealed to my demons, that appealed to my lust and my greed. So I was a very jealous person. I had to fight through that. I, and that was a tough one for me because uh, it was always like uh, I was always, you know, apprehensive about things, about loving women, about, you know, being committed. I knew I was always going to cheat or walk away or leave. I was very, very scared. I was very, very... I was emotionally detached, emotionally detached. And I was dealing with emotional dysregulation from my childhood. I never got any help until I was 50, although I'd already saw um, my first psychiatrist when I was 21 years old. I knew I had problems, but they don't know that I was jealous. I had some insecurities. Women see this guy, I'm macho, you know, head, yeah. full, of hair, head full of hair back in the day, um, social, talkative. They thought, you know, to say I was good looking, but they didn't know that I was very, I was very insecure, Pax, and yeah. I was very Okay. Yeah, and you know what's interesting is that I, I'm just going to lean on you now. You're the hero for the day, so I'm just going to throw stuff out to you. Just, just bear with me. Let's Look, do it. seriously, that is not just you. A lot of men deal with that. Would you not say? Yeah, because maybe, maybe not to the depth that you were dealing with it, but the insecurity aspect. Yeah, it's a macho thing. We don't want a woman to know that we have flaws, yep. we have insecurity. Yep. We can't measure up. You know, and I'm not yeah. talking about, I'm talking about knowing things like, you know, when my girlfriend now deal with things like, I don't know much about the Bible, right? I can't, I can't quote a, 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 a scripture. I can't work from work, but I, I resonate with what it says and what it means and how I'm supposed to live my life so I can live that way. You know, I can read the Bible. I can understand the Bible. I understood the Bible probably five times in my life. Uh, two were at a funeral. One time I went to um, um, church. A long time ago that something happened to me uh when i was on the uss stark when you get a chance to look it up the bombing okay. and yeah. uh somewhere but i had five really um pro profound events that took place in my life with the bible so um yeah a lot of men deal with the insecurities they don't want to talk about it but i had to talk about them because i want to know how to fix it you know i got all these other things i'm worldly i can talk i can i can do uh, i set up a nice weekend i can do massages i can you know you know, do my girlfriend's scalp or whatever, all of that. You, you, can, you can take from nothing and make something happen, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what a man is supposed to do. You take yeah. where there is nothing or where there needs to be improvement, he's able to make it better. But the insecurities, do you feel that maybe they were the thing that was either holding you back? Were they driving you? Well, how, how would you describe the insecurity so that somebody else can wrap their brain around what you're talking about right now? So the insecurities came from me, again, my childhood. I didn't know how to cuddle, right? I didn't, oh, know okay. to, I didn't want to hug because my being molested at, in the first grade by my cousins, being addicted to porn at seven years old because somebody made me sit down and watch porn over and over and over. over. Losing my virginity at eight years old, what am I supposed to do? Okay, yeah. created this little boy. And I held on to it. So my comfort became porn. My comfort became lust and greed, right? Right. Now, you, 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 you couple that with your parents fighting and arguing and drinking and smoking and all of this stuff. And my mother trying to kill my father and guns in the house. You know, what am I supposed to do? So I, I, I would delve into my animals. We had, we had gerbils. We had um, puppies. We had fish and cats. And then I would delve into porn. That was my comfort. That was the thing that gave me a relief, you know, and I started right. loving my girlfriend. What I, what I thought was love was lust. What I thought was love was not abuse, but taking my virginity. That was a badge of honor for me, and it shouldn't have been. And so right. I grew up being this dysfunctional little boy thinking, you know what, I'm sure That that was normal. Huh? You thought that was normal. That, that was. And por that. porn became the way you saw the world or saw your relationship. Yeah. That I'm just, normal. correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, no, that was normal for me. I saw the world from the inside out. It's all about me. It's all about getting revenge. So yeah. I started studying studying women in porn to hurt the women outside of porn. I, I wanted to know her body better than she knew her body because 
I had to be up on her. I had to be above right. because my securities, if she find out that I don't know how to hold hands or hug or I don't know how to communicate, she find this out. Uh, I'm, I'm in trouble. I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm out. Yep, I'm out. Absolutely. I didn't have staying power. I wasn't going to be committed. Pax, I lost my family at 11 years old. What am I supposed to do at 11 years old? I come home from sixth grade graduation and our furniture is on the front lawn. I'm pissed. I'm pissed. I'm angry. What am I supposed to do when my mother's brother is touching my private parts, right? I'm like, I can't fight him. It was nothing, never anything sexual, no intercourse. But I, then I developed anger issues. Okay, so I'm mad at human beings. I was mad at my cousins for molesting me. I was mad yeah. at my family for molesting me. I was mad mm -hmm. at the family member for showing me porn. Now I'm mad at my uncle for touching me. I'm mad at every human being. So now God can't do nothing for me. All these people were, 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 were part of the devil. And so I joined a little crew. Now, and then I took, I took pride in being devilish. I took pride in being evil. I took toward, e toward toward everybody, Leon, or just toward women. No. Uh, well, whoever stepped in your path, or or started with women, because you know why would you take my? Yeah. I was a mad little boy. Grew up too fast, and then it started with my uncle touching me, and now I'm mad at everybody. So now God is not protecting me, right? My parents, they had their own hell going on. They can't protect me. My brother can't protect me. My sister's being, you know, we fighting. I'm bullying my sister. She's the first person I started bullying. My sister. Uh -huh. So, okay, God can't protect me. So, all right, the devil, gonna, I'm, a, I'm down with the devil now. It's on and popping. That was my mindset. And then when we lose our house at, I'm 11 years old, I go to live with a lady that I don't even know, right? I'm on my own. I'm separated from my sister, my brother, my mother and father. 11 years old? So what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to find comfort in that? How am I supposed to be okay with that? By being devilish and accepting that, you know what? I got to be mad. I got to be angry. I got to hurt people. When you went down this process of life that became a lifestyle, did you find yourself thinking that, okay, there's got to be something better than what I'm doing? Or were you really good at being bad? I was really good at being bad. I was really good at lying. I was really good at deceiving. That's who I became. That was my norm, right? Okay? I, God doesn't create narcissistic people. He doesn't. No. He Correct. creates being, and right? We either morph into that based on being a product of our environment, how mm -hmm. people, what path they put us on, how we become developed, right? How we Correct. develop it. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And so, I, it was just like, I had to, this, was, this is who I was. This is where I was going. Uh, I didn't want to. I didn't want to be anybody else. I was comfortable with it. It felt good. What was your question again, Pax? I, no, I when it when it comes to, was it oh. one of those things where you were just being bad and real good at it, or you said, <laughs> you know what, there's got to be something better than this. I need to stop. No, no, because being uncomfortable felt comfortable to me. Being oh, dude, sorry, no time out. That needs to be a shirt. <laughs> that needs to be a cup. You need to hashtag that. Anybody steal that? I'm gonna come get you. Leah and I ain't gonna come get you guys. Seriously, you became comfortable being uncomfortable in that lifestyle yeah and, and so but 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 check this out pax i be un, being uncomfortable was very ple pleasing to me the anger the fighting the arguing it soothed I, you it, it soothed you that's that's all i knew and so how am i supposed to function in a healthy relationship that was uncomfortable for me not gonna happen yeah un uncomfortable un relationship very comfortable for me yeah. fighting arguing yeah. smoking yeah. drinking sex Except drugs. If, if I wasn't in the Navy, I'd have probably done. You probably would have done that. You probably would have done that. So, oh wait. So, peace and quiet. You had to disrupt that and get everything back to that chaos. It made you feel good, and now you were the center of attention and could be at peace. Right. So, peace. When I got married, my wife, ex-wife, was very morally fit, integrity, and character. That did not resonate with me. I resonated with what we call the hood rats, chicken heads, whatever. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Then, you know, chasing each woman, other. Woman of, the, woman of the street fight. Yeah. Have, right. a scene in, have a scene out in public. Yeah. Making, every, making each other uncomfortable. But Pax, I had my first prostitute at 15 years old. Okay. Come on, man. Come on. Seriously, to 15? So that was comfort. So the girls in my that, that's to, that soothes you being with a woman like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted, I wanted a woman to 
I wanted the older woman to dominate me, right? I got you. I got you. I see what you're saying. Dominated me as a child. For my entire life, that was the drug that I needed in my life. Women my age or younger no, couldn't not do interested. No, couldn't do nothing for me. So my cousins dominated me. My babysitter, do babysitter dominated me. But the thing is, I felt like that was okay because they're older. Okay, right? So a, a wait, girl, so so in your so in your psyche, you looking at it, you going like, okay, this is normal. This is I should be. In other words, technically, I should be dominated by I, these people. It's okay. I, I sh so then check this out. I should be dominated, right? And so I was okay with that. As long as she's much older than I am. If she's my age or a year or two younger, she don't stand a chance because I'm not going to open my heart to her. I open my heart to functional women that would dominate me, okay? So when I met my wife, she was pure and clean, had integrity, had character. She, she had a good credit score. She had a degree, no, no children. I was addicted to women that didn't have a degree, that had kids, smoking. Not going anywhere. Yeah, not got, going anywhere, not, not really taking care of themselves. Made a great pr presentation, but behind that, there was nothing at home. No, yeah. Baby, That's what you wanted. Baby daddy in jail, I'm like, baby. <laughs> yeah. You know, three, or four, three or four guys stopping by, and she's talking to three or four men at the same time, telling you she loves you too. Yeah, so also, I found, I studied my dad. My dad died in 1999 from alcoholism. Okay. I studied him and found out that he didn't like women that had character and integrity. He liked women that that, re that had to rely on him. He was a provider. So I become a provider. Uh, I got you. So he, he looked for a woman who needed some assistance, as it were. Or, uh, not, not saying that they were lazy or anything, but it could have been that too. But overall, he looking to be in that role as a provider, and he needed to be surrounded by someone who needed him that way. You became also, the same thing. Yeah, I, I became the same thing. Also, a woman that was okay with him drinking, smoking, oh, okay. gambling, right? Being in pool halls all night. That that suited me well, Pax. When I go over city, <laughs> yeah. we smoking, drinking, pool halls, saying out four or five in the morning. Those women, that appealed to me. I couldn't deal with the woman that had her stuff together. Although I'm in the military, I got a good job, a clean bill of health, a good credit score. That was like born to me. I need somebody to shake me up so I can shake her up so we can bond so we could bond on our trauma. That's what I was all about. I mean, if I didn't get any help until I was 50. I was dredging through the military my entire life, all my relationships, my marriage, just like on pure passion and grit, right? And, lu and, lu and lust and passion and grit. Lust, that, was, that was your lifestyle. Lust, passion, grit, greed. All of greed. that. <laughs> greed. Okay? That's a good one. That's a good point. Go ahead. I wasn't physically violent, but I was verbally abusive. So... I would put women down. I would call them names. All of it. I get loud, and as soon as she figure out who I was, I'm out. I'm bouncing. I did. I was really good at disappearing. Very good at disappearing and making myself believe that this is okay. I'm only gone for three hours. I'm only gone for four. I'm only gone for eight hours. But you, it's your fault. You made me go away. You made me run. You, you hurt my feelings. I still had a little boy inside of me. I didn't process my childhood that at is. all. I saw my grandmother slap my mother. I saw my mother get beat up by my uncle. I saw my mother get her teeth knocked out. I'm addicted to porn. I'm getting molested by my cousins. My babysitter taking my virginity. My uncle touching my private parts. We lose our house. Up until at 11 years old, I was done. Signed, sealed, delivered. Yeah. Welcome yeah. to the world, Leon. And then to me, it's like, hey, world, welcome, Leon, to your life. Here's the devil. Take it or leave it. But then I start, when I joined the Navy, I started learning more things. I was worldly. I was traveling. And that appealed to women, right? I was in shape. I had a head full of hair. Decent looking guy. They say good looking guy, whatever. <clears throat> so I was two to three different people, Pax. People don't understand. Narcissistic people are two to three different people. Easy. I had an innate ability to separate, my, separate myself from reality. I get that from my mother. And I know this. My father had a very extreme personality. My mother had a very addictive personality. So that was amazing throughout life because I was using it the wrong way. I was using it to lure women in. I was using it to dece deceive women. I was using it to lie and, and I just didn't care until my life changed when I started using my addictiveness and my extremeness for positive things. But until it, then... I no, was no go ahead. Go ahead. No, Until then what? You were going to say. I was always hurt. My my brain would hurt, Pax. My, my, my heart would hurt. But 
again, what I get from my mother is the ability to suppress everything, acting like it didn't happen. Okay, that's where I want to. I want to go there just for. I want to go there just for a bit, because people spend hours binge watching and trying to understand and dissect and not have a degree on the wall. Some do it for hours and years, and they have a degree on the wall. The bottom line is, you're saying that having that ability, like your mom. To act as if it, it, it's not even here. It's, no. it's, it never really happened. And just keep getting up the next morning and keep moving on. Did it, did it leave you exhausted physically, mentally, emotionally to the yeah. point that, that you just became angry? Or did you just lie down and wait till you got energy again? Or did you just lash out on other people? No, I lied down until I got energy again, Pax, because I knew the energy was coming back to me. Got right? it. Got it. Okay. Because... By suppressing it, I could remove that from my body. I could remove the negative energy. Even though it was bad, it was mm -hmm. I was being vindictive, I take a nap, I go to sleep, and wake up like it didn't happen. But I kept the women around because I had other good qualities. Uh, I, I was very I was very manipulative, right? I was a menace. I was very charming, okay? Yeah. Because I knew a lot of things about life, because the mm -hmm. white thing Black guys, the Latino guys, the Asian guys taught me a lot of those things in the Navy. But I use it maliciously. So you, you use those things that normally people would grow from in a way to continue to manipulate and keep the lifestyle that you were accustomed to. Well, that you were you were technically that it was forced upon you and th you were thrown into. Now you were able to control your own lifestyle. But we're talking about women who saw you as special, as charming. You were feeling a void for them. You were feeling a need for them. They thought you were going to be their lifelong partner. The no. manipulation was high. The game was high. They literally were getting high off of you because of this game that you had them roller coaster. You had them on. Yeah, and so and then was, you dis then you would disappear. <laughs> you would dis oh. and dude. Then, and then oh, man, that's I'm, a trip. I would come back when I got ready, and they would accept me back because. Everything I did to them are the things that they weren't getting from their mother, father, or their boyfriend. I listened. But did you know that? But did you know? Okay, go ahead. No, yeah, you were listening. I, so in the conversation, I was a great listener. Got it. She wasn't getting what she was desiring, what she was depleting, de depleted of, uh, what she was losing as far as attrition. I could do all of that. Or yeah. if I couldn't, I'd go learn it because... If I wanted her in my life bad enough, whether it was three months, four months, I would master something that she didn't have or, or wasn't getting or didn't know about and use it, give it to her, give it to her, feed her, feed her, feed her, and then disappear. So I wanted her to be fiending for me. I'm not going to fiend for you because I'm afraid to like you. I'm afraid to love you. I'm going to get a little close, not too close. But once I realized what you were missing in your life, what you didn't have, what you desired or what you wanted, I gave that to you. Okay, so let's go to this. Let's, just, let's go to the. Go ahead. You just, you just became a little trophy for me. I'm not yeah. going to get to you. I'm not going to stick around. But you, I did stick around and with women that I, I like, and I didn't want anybody else to have. I had two, two six year relationships and one 12 year marriage. I would stick around to the, with the women that I like, and I didn't want anybody to have. But I knew other men would be attracted to, and I knew other men would marry. Right. Yeah. Yep. 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 I, I'm going to waste her time yep. but I'm gonna yep. her because I mastered what she needed, what she wanted. I became her daddy. And that, that was the goal. The goal was to master what she did not have. So you said earlier you, you would go and learn this, whatever it is that you needed to become, essentially, to, to get her back or to take you back. How, yeah. would you go, how would you go learn something, man? Was it watching a movie? Was it just the... Uh, it Thinking was, about everything she told you in the past, was this how calculating was this and is this process? Very calculating, very evil, very demonic. Okay. Listen okay. to her past, listen to what she wasn't getting. Her father's not around. Okay. So I got to be the manly. So listen, I would tell her in my mind, I didn't tell her, I'm doing all these things, right? Um, and, but this is what I'm going to do for me. I'm going to come and go as I please. You're satisfied. I got to satisfy me. I'm in overdrive right now. So right, I'm right, right. You, now it's time for me to do what I have to do because 
I'm giving you what you've never had before because you told me that you missed what's that's what you're missing. Your yeah. dad was around, your ex didn't do this, your ex didn't buy these things, your ex didn't take you anywhere, you didn't get your hair and nails done. Yeah. So yeah. You are my toy, you are my project, you are my trophy, right? You are under my spell. Don't complain about anything I say or do, period. Because you told me this is what you want. This is what I you gave want. it to you. I'm yeah, gonna give I it. I'm but better. I, I'm better. Whoever left you before, you're right, you know, I, I'm not going to abandon you. But I still get to go do what I'm going to do. You keep getting what you want, but I get to take off and go do whatever I want to do. And come back in a few more days. And it was wrong. It was very wrong. Yes, wrong. Me, very disrespectful. But mm -hmm. I wasn't about respect back then. I was. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that was the last thing on your last thing on your mind, huh? Yeah. I was singing my, yeah. my up and, and sleeping with as many women as I can. Pax, I was sick. So here I am, a little boy watching porn, studying. After a while, the sex wasn't nothing. It was like, all right. You are studying behaviors, huh? You were studying behavior more than there being some type of stimulus, uh, stimulation sexually. You were yeah. watching the behavior reaction of the woman based upon what the guy did so that you would be able to see those same patterns or insecurities and, and quote-unquote needs that a woman would do in the real world, and then you would be able to manipulate? Correct same, me if I'm wrong. Same insecurities, right? Yeah. But also the same reactions. Even though these women might have been acting, I'm like, I can get a woman to that, to do that, to do that. And then here's the thing. My goal was to make her lose her mind. Why not? I lost my mind, okay? Whoa, 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 whoa. No, thank you. You got to time out for a second. Time out. You're saying you wanted her to lose her mind the way you lost your mind from eight years old, five years old on. How is that? that you could get her to lose her mind, make her confused, make her, well, technically delirious, just label her crazy or literally push her toward being off kilter and everybody looking at her going like, man, you're right. What's wrong with her? And you Master, didn't accomplish it. No, master her emotions. Uh, okay. If got it's it. not you, you would master her emotions. Yeah, because people okay. say things are hard. Things are not hard. You're just unfamiliar with whatever it is. So if she thought something was hard, or she was afraid to do something or had never done anything before, I would show her that this is what you can do. This is how you do it. We're talking physical things, right? Right, right, right. I would take her to that level. And then if she if she wanted to go with me to that level, we yeah. went through, she's locked on. Now I'm going to give her all I have. I'm not talking about size. I'm talking about emotion. I'm talking about touching her. I'm talking about manip manipulating her mind. I'm talking about making her feel good. I'm talking about making her cry. Yeah. I'm talking about... Yeah driving her crazy and then yeah. I disappear because she's gonna fiend for that. In my mind, in my mind, in my mind, there's not many people to do that can could have done what I did to her or her or her or her or her. So when I disappear, I'm like, she'll be there when I get back. She made me she made me the guy, right? He may do one or two things, but I'm doing 10 different things. All of them deals with her mind and her emotions. Yeah. Right. You know, taking her Every time she sees you, every time she hears your name and thinks about you, she's taking an emotional roller coaster uh, that's connected to her physically. It's all, everything's going at the same time, not just like a memory. Her yeah, entire body, it, it creates a craving uh, for, for you. Dopamine. So I'm, Dopa, I'm, yeah. I'm emotionally de de detached, right? She meets a guy or we're just dating so we get to see who we want to see. But I knew I had the upper hand. I had to have the upper hand. I, I leave her with making her being emotionally detached from somebody else she's she trying to see or talk to. It ain't going to work because it's, he's not me. I made myself think that there was nobody else like me, so I consumed her whole world. Until 1992, it was reversed on me, and I lost my mind for real. Well, 1992, it was reversed on you, Yeah, and then you lost your mind. Gone. I became Dude, a stalker. I, I, you became a what? A stalker. Wow. It flipped on you. I don't want to ever see a man or woman go through, go through. Okay, I'm going to tell you this, Pax. If you were, if you dated somebody, let's say a good person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good yeah. morals. Good mor When you say good person, you mean you, like good morals. You know, they're taking care of themselves, uh, not just physically, but they 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 accomplishing their goals. They're mo they're waking up with a purpose every day, every and day. not looking not looking backwards, but living in the present and moving forward. Got it. Good person. Go ahead. Good.
and just say on top of that she's into God, right? Mm -hmm. And you hurt her feelings or you abuse her. Your karma is going, going to be so devastating that you will not have any strength to move forward. This happened to me when I was in the Navy. I had like 12 years in. I woke up February 1991. Okay. All right. We, 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 were, we were deploying. We were going overseas. Mm -hmm. I wanted to experience more exotic women. Thailand, oh. Japan, right? Mm -hmm. I, wanted to, I wanted to abuse more exotic women. That was just my mindset. Got it. Okay. it wasn't a physical abuse. It was like I wanted to conquer women overseas. I conquered women in the States. I wanted, wanted to conquer women overseas. I woke up that morning. My mind was fixated on that. We had been together for five years. I said, hey, look. And this is what I told her, Pax. I said, I don't like you anymore. I don't Whoa. love you. Yeah, Whoa. Don't. Just like that. That's what I tell people. People like, and when I talk about these things, Pax, I get real sick because that's not who I am anymore. And I can't no, believe it's I was, obvious. It's obvious it's not who you are. But but you said it wouldn't. There was nothing to it, huh? When you said it, there was. I'm. I, you know, I have a heart. All I can do is smile because I'm going like, I can't believe you said that, man. That's like if somebody said it to my daughter, you know, I want to kill him. But that's that. That's not right before God. Her earlier this year, we talked about. I hadn't seen her in ten years, but I told her that, and I got up, we deployed, went overseas. I did what I told her I was going to do. I cheated. I didn't want her to be back. I didn't want her to be there when I came back. We lived in San Diego. Wow. Uh -huh. Woman, we were in our twenties. I was. I thought I was in love, but I was in lust and greed. I needed help, Pax. And so, we were there, gone for three months. I was like, she gone, good to go. Blah blah blah. I made it so that, in my mind, I didn't have a girlfriend. Women don't detach that easy. Men do. No, no. Yeah, men but, do. Yeah, that uh, is true. Yeah, we uh, can... oh, you know what? Just before you go any further, Leon, ladies, please, if you're listening, and by the way, everybody, you know, I normally bring you into the chat. Uh, please stay on. You're going to be able to talk to Leon. Just hang in there. But I just want to say this. This is what Leon just said, which I just got to repeat what you said, man. This is a fact. Men will detach so quick. Mm -hmm. A woman will be shocked how quickly he'll think as if you never existed. Right? But, will you please? Will you please? But go ahead. Unless we don't have it. <laughs> Plan. There you go. <laughs> I, I offer, right? So I was all cocky and arrogant, like yep. I don't, I don't love you. Blah 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 blah. Ain't nobody gonna like you like I like you. Nobody gonna love you. Nobody gonna have sex with you like we do. Oh, buddy. So she was a very, she had integrity, character. She's a test of God. And when you mistreat somebody like that, it's gonna, your world is gonna crash. So after after being gone for three months, I called home, left the bar out there flirting with these Japanese women, outside kissing on them, all this stuff. I'm like, let me call home, 5 o'clock in the morning. Keep in mind, I kind of forgot that I told her, in my mind, we're still together because I'm arrogant and I'm cocky and I'm greedy. I can you just, But you just dumped the woman, but in your mind... She okay, go ahead. Back, you, I, knew, I, I got knew, you. Regardless of what you. I told her, so I thought, I knew she wasn't going anywhere. Women don't leave Leon. Leon does the leave. <laughs> Oh, dude, you were you were rolling high on on the arrogance, huh? Gone, right? You will never leave me. You can't leave me. There's nobody out here like me. But there was there was a guy. Uh -huh. So I called home, and we left in February. I called home in May of '91, five o'clock in the morning. And she said, "Leon, I got company." I knew then I was done because immediately. My heart sank. Wow. I started sweating. I was outside. I had never heard that before. Nobody had ever left me. I do the leaving. I do the controlling. I do the dominating. I do the, I hurt the feelings. Nobody can hurt me. My mama hurt me. So there's no other hurt that, like that, but it, it, it was. Wow. My mom, my father got divorced. That hurt me. My family screwed me over. That hurt me. We lost our house. I'm in the streets. There's no more hurt like this. I'm good. But when you hurt somebody that's good to you, there's a worse hurt than your mother leaving you. I'll tell you that much. i tell you that much. And so she said, I can't talk to you and I got company. Five o'clock in the morning, a dude is in my bed, in my apartment that I left three months prior, laying, to my beautiful, laying next to my beautiful girlfriend, just had sex with her, I know, and she hung up the phone. I was done. That's all it took. 
we pulled back in to San Diego in June of 92, May of June 92, 91. She didn't come see me. Normally when a ship pulls in, family's on the pier with blooms and posters. Hey, welcome back. I didn't okay. get nothing. She was gone. She came to see me three hours later, new haircut, lip gloss on, earrings, body looking good. Looked at me like I was nothing. She Then she started treating me like I treated her. Ooh. And I, Pax, I, I had no control over what I, my tears, my heart rate, my heartbeat, my stomach was hurting, my head was hurting. I couldn't do it. I had no strength to combat that because I had messed over a good lady. Even if she wasn't into the Bible or if she wasn't working on her ministry, she was a good person. She was faithful to me, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I made us unequally yoked. Even though we were living together and fornicating, I made it was she wanted to marry me. I didn't do any of that. She was trying to do all the right things. I was she was the, she was trying to move it in the right direction so that you could finally have some type of stability in a in a quote unquote relationship family structure yeah. that you could then be the head of, and you blew it up with dynamite big time. Blew it up, blew it up, blew it up, and then so I chased her for months after that. What? Okay. Did you so become I, seriously? You really did become a stalker, dude. For her. I'm gonna tell you the story. You want to hear it? Go ahead, my man. Go ahead. So when she started. When she left the ship, she wouldn't. I couldn't go see her. We just pulled back in. I called her. I went and got a hotel room. Asked her to come stay with me. She came. She's like, "Look, I'm not sleeping with you, and you're gonna buy me some dinner." I bought her dinner. I went and got her some flowers. She threw them away. Her girlfriend called. What you doing, girl? I she making me listen to this conversation, Pax. I'm sitting here with Leon. He tripping and crying and stuff. I was crying. Come on, girl. I'm gonna come get you. Her girlfriend came and got her. Boom. They gone. Gone to the club. I'm in the hotel room. All weekend by myself. Chinese food got cold, flowers on the floor, rock bottom. But Couldn't I just, eat. So I kept like, baby, can you can you please? So before I left to deploy, I never called her on the phone. When I'm out with the boys, she called me, call me, come on, I ain't calling you. Now I'm calling her. Now I'm calling her mother. Now I want help. I need help getting her back. She wasn't about that. So I started, I found out where she lived. She moved in with a, a female friend of mine and went over there, climbed the gate. First, I went downtown San Diego, got me a bottle of uh, 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 Brass Monkey and Cisco, mixed them up. Mm. I was gone, Pax. Drank it, drank it, drank it, sat on the curb. I'm downtown San Diego, drunk. Let me go get it. Got to get it back. Got to get it back. Got to get it back. I go to the apartment, climb over the gate. Mm. <clears throat> look at the apartment, knock on the door, straighten myself up. I didn't want to look drunk. Her girlfriend answered the, answered the door, which is a friend of mine. Yo, Sheila, where my girl at? Oh, Leon, ain't, ain't your girl, but she gone. I'm like, all right. She's like, you want to come in back? She let me in. She shouldn't let me, never let me in. She left. I went in the bedroom, lifted up the mattress, looking for pictures, found pictures of her and him, pulled her drawers open, pulled her panties out, sniffing the panties, saw pictures of her and him. Still losing my mind. I wasn't showering. I wasn't brushing my teeth. I was in the Navy. I've been in 12 years. I wasn't getting a haircut. Wasn't able to perform at work. Getting in trouble. Get off of work. Look for her again. Look oh. for her. I was hiding in her bushes back at her apartment. Three in the morning. Until she came home. Sometimes she never came home. I was in the bushes from three to eight or nine o'clock. I didn't stalk her to hurt her. I stalked her because I wanted answers. I wanted her back. I wanted to say I was sorry. I couldn't cry anymore. I, could, I couldn't cry anymore. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I was cocky, arrogant, wasn't crying. She was doing all the crying. She was mm -hmm. doing all the calling. She was always warning about me. But when, it, when the tables turned, I couldn't handle the tables. In fact, I don't, I don't ever want to see a man go through that. And so broke me all the way down to my purest form. But guess what? She didn't take the devil out of me. He came back. Wow. Right? So I wasn't going out. I started showering again. I started going out. So I look. I was looking. I was going to the club in San Diego, looking for her. Going to the club in L.A., looking for her. Couldn't Ooh. find her. Couldn't find her. I decided, I know what I need to do. She wanted to get married. I'm going to ask her to marry me. Oh, wow. No, you didn't. Seriously? Went downtown to the pawn shop, got a wedding band, went across the street to the store, got a 
bouquet of flowers. I found out where she worked because she didn't tell me. I found out. Went into her job, got on one knee and asked her to marry me. She told me no. And the lady at the front desk like, you need to get out of here. We, she doesn't like you anymore. Don't you know she got a boyfriend? And I looked at the pads. I don't hit women. I looked at the la la that lady and I wanted to do all kinds of things because I was so hurt. But then when I walked in my ex-girlfriend's office to see, I looked at, she had pictures of this dude all over her desk. Wow. Just, yeah, uh, uh, I deserved it. I got what I deserved. I left there crying. Well, the police escorted me out because I wasn't supposed to be there. I'm Ooh. in there crying. I'm loud. Months go by. I give up. I quit. I started going out. Wasn't dating. Couldn't date. And I got her back. That's the worst thing she could have ever done. When you, whoa, whoa, whoa. Seriously, man? Wait, you got her back? Yeah. After all of that, yeah, because you I got knew, her back. Because, Pax, I knew what she wanted. She wanted to be married. She wanted a family. Yeah. She was just out there dating a Marine, having fun, drinking. But her core, I knew what her core was about. I knew what her heart uh, was about. Okay? okay. So I, I knew what to say. I said all the right things to get her back. Reeled her right you, in. Yeah, reeled her back in. So now I'm being vindictive and manipulative and covert, right? All of these things and seductive, okay? So I'm piling it on. They call it love bombing now. Mm -hmm. I'm piling it on because I know what to do. See, this dude had my girl, but he didn't know her like I did. So now I knew what to do even more. Got her back. She broke up with him. We moved in for a year. In fact, the whole year, I calculated my exit plan. Well, no, wait. You're telling me you were calculating leaving yeah. after you got her back? Yeah. For approximately a year. Yeah, narcissistic people, not only do we not like to lose, but we, we, we can't lose. Can't, Fail can't lose. No, failure is <clears throat> debilitating. We'll do anything. We'll go to any length to hurt you, to get you back, to hurt you, to destroy you, to change you so that you, you're no good for anybody else. And then you'll just move on. Go. On. And then they'll, a narcissist will move on. But... Before we move on, we have to know mm. that we destroyed you. So that's a trophy that we keep for the rest of our life. Well, okay. So you you waited a year. Okay, it lasted about a year. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. How did you end up finding out later whether you destroyed her or not? How how do what did you do reconnaissance? What do you how do you find out if you destroyed that person? Because when you when you when you plan a wedding and then you call it off. Oh, you did that. Oh, you did it all, man. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad, man. So I was packed, and I, I have to live with that regret for the rest of my life. I don't yeah. Think horrible. So when you when you plan a wedding, and you get the groomsmen notified, and the bridesmaids notified, and you're calling people, and then not too far from the wedding, I decided I want to get stationed in Cleveland. I want to be a recruiter. She didn't even know. I came home. Wow. And I said, hey, I'm leaving tomorrow. Where are you going? Cleveland. Okay. For the weekend? I'm like, no. Nah, I'm transferring. And she saw. She fell on the floor. And I said, I'm going there for four years, and I'm not taking you with me. I remember it clear as day, Pax, and I left. 1992, June, I went to Cleveland and didn't see her again for, I think she might have came to done and then I didn't see her again for 10 years and another 10 years uh, I destroyed her and everything I, I went through that I went through from that point forward it was because of how I mistreated her um, so I called off the wedding and didn't even look back <clears throat> but everything everything th did you just say everything that you've been going through since then was because of the way you treated her is that what you just said yeah mm -hmm. There, there's so much that has been happening over here in the group. I have a monitor off to the side. For some of you who are just here for the first time and, and don't know how the channel works, uh, I'm, I have a monitor I'm looking at over here and, and one over here and talk to my guests straight ahead. But this thing has been blowing up over here off to the side. I can see from the very beginning 
And trust me, Leon, we ain't got enough time, man. You you ain't trust me, um, man. You and I both have our glasses on. We ain't got enough time to read everything everybody been saying. <laughs> because you know you don't went from the devil to the demon to the we love you to to everybody loves you. I just I, I just want to read a couple of things before we go on. Uh, we have gone 46 minutes. We're actually so everybody knows this. It's up to you if you want to come back. But uh, we are going to come back for another segment. Uh, we may have two more, but you're more than welcome to come back. I have tons of things to go over with Leon. He's just sharing his life. But, man, I got to read some things to you here. Uh, let's see. You took her back and repeat the cycle again. Uh, that's from Ann Crosby, uh, one of our, our loyal followers to the show. Is that kind of she's just asking, is that kind of what you did? You took her back and then repeated the cycle again? Oh, oh yeah. So, OK, so Pax and Ann, here's a question. Here's the answer. A narcissistic person, you can defeat them, but our defeat okay. is, temp is temporary because they put so much into this one person, they know so much about them that that's part of our exit plan, right? To conquer. What you know about them is part of the exit plan? Yeah. Getting that, that kind of reconnaissance and, 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 ch and getting that info is what you can utilize to make your exit have much more of a shameful and painful impact. On them, not on, on Yeah, I mean on them. Yeah, not yeah. on you, but on yeah. So the narcissist is, 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 is at war with somebody that loves them, okay? Wow. But they don't understand that. I did, but she didn't know. She thought I was just being lovey-dovey and I changed. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. people, narcissists can't change. I'm totally different now. God don't create narcissists. We're developing to that. But I get what people are saying, how they feel that way. They probably still with somebody that hasn't changed. I did. But narcissists are at, at war with the people that they don't want to be with, but they don't want nobody else to be with, right? Interesting. So I have to make her to where she does, she, she can't afford to be away from me emotionally, right? But I can be, I can afford to be away from her emotionally. Okay. That's why okay. I'm always, I was always emotionally detached. But she so that you, so that you could leave so that you you have no problem leaving. Gone, poof, gone, ghost. Well, how how do you? Okay, I know you kind of touched on it before, but just uh, whichever way you like to uh, shrink wrap as possible for people who are trying to because uh, I'm reading what a lot of people are saying. They're trying to understand it also. How did you get her emotionally? How does a narcissist get someone emotionally to can't live without them? Because you know the you know the potholes in them emotionally, and you're you're filling them up, but not all the way. Everything that she wanted or was missing or desired or needed. <laughs> That's what you became. You became that. That was just you. So I was at war with me, but I was okay with that. Okay. My war. Nobody knows about it. Got it. Got it. I'm at war with her because I can't measure up. I can't love. I I I can't be committed. I don't have staying power. I don't have longevity. So my war within myself, I'm used to it. This is who I am. I'm abnormal. But but that war. She's she's normal, but she's about to be abnormal because she can't deal with the war that I have with her, but I can deal with my war and her war because I'm in charge of both wars. But you're warring with her because she's normal or because or you're angry at yourself that you can't be her. So she's normal. I'm abnormal. Got I'm it. Com I'm comfortable with being abnormal. Got it. She, uh, she's about to be abnormal, but she's not comfortable with that. She doesn't, she doesn't know that lifestyle. I do. Got it. She's a good person. I'm not a good person. I'm evil. I'm deceitful. I'm dysfunctional. But she's trying to help me and bring me around, but I'm fighting it. That's the war with myself. Also, I can't allow her to leave me because that's failure. That's more hurt. That's more for you. Hurt. For you, that's more hurt for you. For me, that's more. So her hurt. her leaving is not is not an option. Oh, you can leave. Oh, she no, no. can't. No, she leaves. She defeats me. When my girlfriend left me in ninety two, in 90, 91, she defeated me. Got it. Narcissists don't like to be defeated. We can't understand. I don't. I didn't. Pro I can't process that hurt or pain. So in, in order for me to process that hurt or pain, I have to win so that I don't think it's hurt or pain. I took a temporary loss, but now I got a plan to defeat, you know, to, to win again. Bigger and better, 
even though in reality it really is pain that's caused in the moment, but it's like like you were saying about your mom. Okay, I see it, but I'm about to deliver something bigger, so I really didn't lose. Bigger and better. Bigger and better, okay. Bigger, bigger okay. The challenge was, oh, shit. Ooh, she got me. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You got me. And this is true. This is true, Leon, how it used to be. You got me. But it ain't over. And now when I, wow. get, when I get you, it's going to be the worst thing you've ever dealt with in your life. I'm going to be worse than your dad leaving. What you, you, go, you were trying to top whatever they had. They will never forget you. What you were going to do was going to be the worst thing ever happened to him. This is a mindset going in. And you would deliver that blow. Yeah. I, would, I was very calculating. I, I planned it. It's very bad to do that, Pax. It was very bad things that I've done. I have a lot of regret. Uh, I still hurt thinking about it. I don't want to ever do a woman like that ever again. I won't. I get sick to my stomach even thinking about it. Even talking to you about it, it hurts. Because it's like, not like, it's like, oh, man, how could you, you know, but I, I develop into that person. Okay? That's who I became. And I lived that life. And then I go to Cleveland and become an H W H O R E for two years straight until wow. I get, and I, I destroyed my marriage suit because I was still sick mentally. I didn't get any help. I was still in denial. Um, I was still unable to commit. I thought I could commit. I couldn't, yeah. you know, I still had addictions, no excuse. I didn't want to get help because I liked the person yeah. that I, again, I was still comfortable with being uncomfortable. So I destroyed my marriage. I was cheating, you know, and um, I, I, I blame, always blame my childhood. That was my way out. Well, they messed me up. It's not my fault. No, Leon, yeah, you had a rough childhood, but you're doing great in the Navy. How do you do so good? You had such a dysfunctional childhood. You were doing great. They should never told me that. They should have put me in the hospital. Wow. But in actuality, you, you had festering inside a lot of things that you end up putting on other people that you got in relationships with. But did you do that to people in the Navy as well? Or it was only limited to women and people outside of the Navy? Did you find yourself being this uh, wrecking ball everywhere or Every only to certain people? No, everywhere I went. It, it didn't matter. Mm -hmm. it didn't, I was always afraid to love. Okay, because I didn't know how to love. I, love love scared me because I always thought that a woman would leave me. Okay, so here I am in the Navy. I got a great job. I always tell myself, I mean, you're a cool dude, man. No, nah, you're not a cool dude. You need to be a butthole, bro, because somebody can hurt your feelings. Somebody can leave you. You know, mom left you. You know, your, your parents got divorced. I always had these voices in my head. And mm -hmm. that's me to, to, to experience the pain I had when I was 11 years old. Uh, when I wanted to commit suicide twice. Wow. Okay. So I didn't want to get close to a woman, Pax, to make me want to commit suicide again. All right? As a child, I had two suicide ideations. As an adult, on a Navy ship, I had access to weapons. Yes. How easy would it be for me to... And mm -hmm. when we security watches, Pax, we have, we have a 9 millimeter with a clip. We got a shotgun. Okay. It's so easy for me to go in the corner and I don't mean to trigger anybody. I didn't want to go to get any anywhere remotely close to that pain. The pain I had from being molested, my babysitter taking my virginity, my uncle touching me, my uncle bullying me, and then that drives me to want to commit suicide. I couldn't imagine going down that road again because a girlfriend left me. Hell no. I could have been many things, Pax, and I'm not. I could have been a child molester, but I'm not. I could have been a rapist, but I'm not. I could have been gay, but I'm not. I'm straight. I love my gay friends. I love my, my, my dysfunctional friends, right? I could have been a murderer, but I'm not. I had a lot of anger issues. The only way for me to, to, to go through life, Pax, and enjoy life was to be a serial cheater, okay? We, we, we talk about serial killers all the time. Somebody kills three or more people. We never talk about serial cheaters. Somebody that cheats with three or more people. We don't talk about that. Pax, that was my comfort zone. I couldn't, I wasn't comfortable being married. I was an oddball in the marriage. I was never groomed to be a groom. 
My brothers were great brothers. My uncles and my father, great men in my life. I joined the Navy, had some great men, but I also had some serious dysfunctional men that allowed them to lead me astray. I was very influential. I wasn't a good, I wasn't a good, I sucked as a husband. There was times where I sucked as a father and I loved children. I just, mm -hmm. but my comfort zone was being a serial cheater to fill my voice because I'm, I'm not going to get too close to you. Oh, oh no. Yeah. Because if I do and you leave me, I don't want to hurt anybody. I hurt a girl. I hurt her feelings. I'll say bad things. But physically, I have to hurt myself because I can't, I couldn't deal with the hurt of somebody else leaving me, Pax. I couldn't. That, that, that type of, of abandonment and people leaving you set you on a course that now you don't live anymore. That's not a course you live anymore. No, 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 no. I'm fine. Well, so well, I was, the reason I'm before you go on, Leon, the reason I'm saying that is because, again, uh, I'm listening to you, my friend, and, and I'm looking at what everybody's uh, writing. And many people are getting a, a very big eye opening moment to say a lot of different things here. Um, but you're talking about a brokenness that you went through. Can you speak to this? And I'm going to ask you this. Just some of the things that you have said in your videos. Mm -hmm. You said same pain, same story, as it were. People can have the same pain that they had in the past, and they keep taking it with them. Yeah. You're, you're not carrying that same pain, but you're not ignoring it either, right? Like it never happened. We've been, you've been mentioning it over and over where it started. It's, I, I keep it with me. I, I manage it. I never managed it. Go. It managed me. It was like, dog. No. If he's going to hurt you, now nah, don't get close to her. Turn her out. You know, make a loser mind. Be out. Be proud. That's all I was. Now, mm -mm, I can't. I don't even. I can't. I, you know what, Pax? I can never stand to see a woman cry. Kind of weird. Because when I made him cry, it turned me on. Wow. And I didn't know how to process that. I, I would make a woman cry and be like, what the hell are you crying for? Ah. Or it's like, make a woman cry. Man, that looks sexy. Kiss her. And I was hoping she wouldn't kiss me back. But if she did, it went to other things. And we hugging, and it's over. Get up, shower, let's go eat. Uh, Thanks. I would go. No, no emotional connection. No. I couldn't. Why? For what? She ain't going nowhere. I Overseas, women were plentiful. They rolled out the red carpet for us. Wow. 18 years old, all my <laughs> women, women, women. In a relationship, and I made myself believe this, I get it from my mother. My mother gave me a lot of great qualities. But this one, I use it. If I went to a port, the Philippine Islands. Philippine Islands has, back then it had 7,000 islands. Now it's about, no, 8,000. Now it's about 7,000. They import women from the islands to Masasa Avenue, a longer post city. Look it up. Mm -hmm. It's in a Guinness Book of World Records for having the most bars in one strip. I, we put in our way 180. We pulled out a week later, I weighed 155. All I was doing was drinking and having sex, okay? With my girlfriend, and this is a very sick thing that I did, I made myself believe. If I slept with three women in the Philippine Islands, at a minimum, because I was chasing the feeling that my babysitter gave me when she molested me. Molest molested you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I made myself want that feeling over and over and over again. So... Leon, you're W-H-O-R-E. I know. My babysitter made me this. I didn't, I didn't ask to be a womanizer. I blame it on my babysitter. So that was my excuse, okay? Mm -hmm. If I slept with three women in the Philippine Islands, if I slept with one woman in Hong Kong, if I slept with two women in, in, in Australia, by the time we got back to the States, if we hit three ports and I didn't sleep with any women, in my mind, I slept with zero. I erased it. And it is, I, as if it never happened. Never happened. I don't, because I don't have reminders to think about those women. They're not going to call me. They're going to contact gotcha. me. 
There's nothing, nothing that really attached you to them anyhow to even make you even have a glimpse of remembering them. No. So I, I made myself believe that, man, dude, you deployed for six months and didn't sleep with anybody. Thank God I, thank God I did get into diseases, okay? Um, I had gonorrhea when I was 16 in Cleveland. Never got anything. Pax, I was just a very, very, very sick person. And I understand I'm a trigger to women. They see my bald head, my big nose, my big teeth, my voice. I, I, I understand. I, no, I don't want to trigger any women anymore. I don't want to hurt any women. I don't want to break nobody's heart. I don't want to be dysfunctional anymore. I don't want to go in and out of relationships. Well, okay? let, me, let, me ask, let, me ask, let me ask you this. So when it comes to who women want you filled that void for the women that crossed your path or you 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 use them as you say you went to different ports mm -hmm. but if you had to describe the type of guys you were running with were they different than you or just like you oh no if you didn't have a bunch of women if you didn't drink a lot if you didn't mm -hmm. curse a lot if you didn't fight, I didn't do any fighting. I could box, but I didn't have to fight. If you didn't fight a lot, those other guys, you weren't about nothing. Really? Yeah. Dude, there, there was not no guys walk around going like, hey, man, we really shouldn't treat women like that. No, nah, man, that, that's not cool. No, no. When I I got to my first ship in March of 1984, mm -hmm. my friend from Detroit said, hey, man, welcome aboard. Do you go down on women? And I was like, I was 18. I'm like, nah. Yeah. Like, he's like, yo, man, come here, man. Check this dude out. He from Cleveland. He don't go down on girls. They made fun of me. So what did I do? You did what you did to be a part of the group. And it just kept... Ne so so you went from, from being with your family, and now they became, per se, like your family. And just as much as you were influenced from the family that you initially, your intact family at the beginning that you had, even divorce or whatever the case may be, now you with these, well, your new family, not not going to pick on the Navy or whatever it may be, but with the guys that you were hanging out with, but at some point, you became who you are right now. At what point, what year, what time frame, if you had to say? Did you start moving toward this path that brings you to who you are today? We've gone an hour and four minutes. Tell us right now, what year, what time frame was it, Leon, when you started to become this Leon and, okay. and started warning everybody not to be that other Leon? So this is going to be very alarming, what I'm about to tell you, Pax. Very, very alarming. And people are going to hate me. They're going <laughs> to... 1992, 1994, uh, for two years in Cleveland, from 92 to 94, I slept with a lot of women, okay? For two years in Cleveland, I grabbed on to my dad's alcoholic trait. I drove under the influence for two years, got mm. pulled by the police, let go, because I had on my uniform, all right? Mm. So I uh -huh. Cleveland. Again, deflecting, I blame Cleveland for creating this monster when I was recruiting duty. Cleveland loved athletes and they loved the military. I was at work one day and my friend, great friend of mine, he said, hey man, I'm tired of you messing with these ghetto women. I'm like, dude, that's what I like. Like I told you earlier, my father liked those type of women. I couldn't deal with the woman that had her stuff together. I didn't know what to do. Sexually, yeah. I knew it. I could kiss her. I could hold a conversation. I could drink liquor with her. Having a ha having a, a committed relationship was not in your wheelhouse. What? <laughs> I like the face, the facial expression, man. That was pretty cool. Go ahead, go ahead. You're gonna say. I, he said he brought me. Well, this man used to always bring me women. So then he brought me this one woman, and I was like, "Whoa, nice looking." She didn't have any kids. Packs. I always liked women that had kids for whatever reason. I like women that smoked and drank and argued, okay? I was addicted to drama. I was addicted to dysfunction. Like I told you, 
uncomfortable was comfortable to me. My mm -hmm. brain hard that way. I had to rewire it. Anyway, I had a girlfriend when he, I, I had like five girlfriends at one time, okay? Maybe more. I don't remember. He said, man, I'm tired of you being out here like this, bro. You're a recruiter, professional, active. So he met, I met the woman, and I said, you know what? All right, I'm going to stop. I'm going to change my ways. We started Ooh. dating, got together. She got pregnant. We got engaged. I cheated. I was cheating again and again and again. The woman I cheated with got pregnant. We got married. Our daughter was still born. And the woman I cheated with had my daughter five months later. So my wife and I lost our child in May of 95. And the lady I cheated with had our, my daughter in September 95. I didn't know she was pregnant by me. She told me I didn't believe it. I should have known because I did it. Um, but my daughter's 26 years old now, and it, it caused a strain. It caused my marriage to be broken up. From 1994 to 1996, I went from 190 pounds to 245 pounds. I gained 55 pounds in one year. I almost got kicked out of the Navy uh, because I was overweight. I almost lost my wife then. Um, I had to go see a nutritionist. I had to go see a psychiatrist. Uh, I was doing bad at my job as a recruiter. I wasn't making gold. We were doing horrible. I couldn't mm -hmm. function. Um, those thoughts of suicide started coming back. And mm -hmm. I, I didn't let them get too close to me. Um, 1996, we transferred from Cleveland to Virginia. Uh, it was me and my wife. And the following year, we had a son. And so we moved forward. But my daughter, and, I, and this is where it gets worse, because I cheated on my fiance. Um, I decided not to see my daughter for the first six years of her life. Mm -hmm. Wow. It wasn't, had nothing to do with my wife. I made the decision to try to appease my wife. That was stupid. My daughter and I are very close now. Um, and so I've done a lot of bad things, Pax, and I have ha I've had a lot of karma. And so now to answer your question, I think about all those bad things I've done. I can't do it anymore. I started this journey when I was about 40 and yeah, okay. living with my girlfriend. And I told her I, I wasn't going to marry her. I was wasting her time, which I hmm. was beautiful young lady from Cleveland. I was in love with her, but I told her I'm, I, I'm not going to marry you. This is where I'm wasting your time. You deserve a better man than me. And so that was in 2014. And then I started my journey then and started getting better, started healing. I realized that for the last 32 years, I've been in and out of relationships, carrying my baggage from one relationship to the next. Mm -hmm. and women now, men do it now. They treat the next man like the last man. I was doing that in every last one of my relationships, thinking that, oh, you're going to control me. You're going to be dominating. You're going to blah, 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 blah. But I caused my ex-wife to watch me like a hawk because I was a cheater. Mm -hmm. The worst thing you do to give your girlfriend, the worst thing you do to hurt your girlfriend and your wife, two things. You give them a disease or you give somebody pregnant. And I expected her to just take it. Yeah, I got somebody pregnant. Blah, 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 blah. Imagine me being married and my wife come home and tell me she's pregnant by another man. By another man. Oh, man. No, yeah, right? There'll be no more walls or roof left, right? I'm, men leave. Women stay oh, around. Yeah, no, that is true. Yeah. Men, yeah. Women mourn, then they leave. Men leave, then we mourn. That's why we become stalkers. Yeah. You, you got a very good. That's a hey, dude. Seriously, that's like a whole show in itself. Because <laughs> we. Hey, we were telling women stuff that, that most men that they live with won't, don't want to tell them, but that's exactly what you just said. Anybody that's watching this, please, please play it back, what Leon said when you watch the replay, because that's a fact, what you just said about men and women. That, that's a bona fide fact. Hey, look, seriously, it's uh, we've got an hour and 10 minutes. I'm going to run something by you. There's so much happening here. Uh, i got to read one to you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, somebody just gave you props. Where'd it go? Let me, Leon, oh, here it is. Uh, becoming feminine forces. I don't know if you know this person or not, but they're giving you some props. Leon is truth. Uh, they're giving you props for um, uh, the roots of empathy. His name is Tim, by the way. He watches the the shows, uh, free TV. He says, "My respect, Leon. Change is possible. Uh, continue your path and stay honest." Um, dude, there's there's so much more, man. Seriously, if I get a chance, I, there's no way. I, there's no way for me to to keep everything that everybody's saying, and it's good, man. Don't don't take it. It's, 
It's not bad. Love no. Leon's uh, Love Leon's honesty. This is from Lanny uh, Cakes One. Uh, Love Leon's honesty, uh, crushing on his transparency. Uh, I appreciate it. But here we go. I got to do some real quick before we go to a commercial break. I'm going to upload this. Everybody pretty much knows the program here and the way I do it. Um, and then we're going to be back. The universe gives second chances here. That's from one karma three. Uh, I can't keep up, man. I, there's too, there's yeah. too much happening, happening yeah. over here and in front of me. It just keeps rolling. So just uh, all I can tell you is hearts have been streaming. You've probably seen them. But here we go. Let's do a round robin real quick. And by the way, if you come back, everybody, for the second uh, segment we're going to do, uh, you're going to see more of what we're about to do. So here we go. I'm going to say stuff that came out of your videos. Okay? All right? All right. You're not supposed to remember what it is. You're just supposed to have knee-jerk reaction, man. Don't, don't be trying to sit there. The audience, the audience, now the hearts are going up and down. The, everybody, m most people know I do this every now and then, but only to certain people. That doesn't mean I don't like everybody else. It doesn't mean that Leon's better than anybody. Don't, don't, don't be writing me because I don't get trolls. So don't write me nothing stupid because I'm just going to delete it anyhow. I don't even read it if it don't sound right. So here we go. I'm going to throw it out to you. Just have at it. And, oh. and, and there's no time limit. Normally, I put a time limit when we do this, but it's kind of like a mini game, and we're going to do more when we come back. So here we go. This is all stuff from your, 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 your uh, page. Attraction shock, being hoodwinked. What comes to mind? in relationships and dealing with a narcissist when you hear attraction shock and hoodwink. Now remember, these are all your terms from your, your stuff. So go ahead. Attraction shock is when a woman, so for instance, you get a woman that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's been hurting, right? She's vulnerable and she sees a good looking guy, smells good, well-groomed, decent car, and the conversation goes and he's got a good job. Uh, he's doing well. You can just talk about credit score and maybe he's got an LLC or a business plan. She's shocked <gasps> because there's a shortage of men and they don't see these type of men that often. Uh, Done. Wide open, sipping wine, turned on, feeling herself. It's been six months she's been touched. Now you're rubbing her hand, caressing her shoulders or massage shoulders, giving her compliments. She's wide open. She'll fight it that night. She'll fight it maybe the next day. But she's you, not you, you, you know, you know, there's going to be some guys looking to try to get you off this planet. You know yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. I could. I'm just going to say this right now. I have to stop you there for, for, for this reason. Ladies, anybody watching this right now to this point and get to this point where what Leon just said, I couldn't pay p guys to come on this show and say what he just said. I couldn't. Pay, I have been trying for a whole year. My daughters and I get guys on this show to talk, have this discussion. Did you often talk about in your videos? And I was like, when I saw it, I went like, dude, you got to come on the show, man. Because I guys will go like, no, nah, man, I, I can't come on. I can't come on your show and talk like that. My wife will figure out, you know, how I got her. You know, right. it was kind of like, it was, no, you know what I'm talking about. You know, no, but, it's, it's like letting out the secrets that guys have. But this is very important for women to know. But go ahead. Yeah, but it's like, I don't do that anymore. It's like, I don't have to do that anymore. You know, it, it's like. I did that. It was fun to me. It was a game. That's and what it. That's right. It's a game. It's not real. And sure. and ladies, ladies need to keep that in mind. Uh, the amazing. guy is literally playing a game. Yeah, and you said it was attraction shock. What was the other word you said? Um, uh, you, uh, you use a, you, a hoodwinked. You, you you said in that same video that uh, oh, yeah. the the oh. woman or guy. No, it'll happen to a guy too. You, you yeah. get hoodwinked. You, you be, it's like somebody pulled a hood over your head and you thought you saw one thing. Now you're, you're kidnapped and they're, they're having their way with you. So I also talk about this thing called the irresistible minimum, right? Where I knew that a woman wasn't going to deny me or reject me because through my conversation, I dress decent, look like I'm in shape, great conversation. Again, talk about my credit yep. score, pilot. where you live. I got an apartment over here. I got my car. I got yep. benefits. Who's going to turn that down? It looks it looks so promising. Right? And that's that's who I was presenting, but I'm not going that's to right. it in your life. Yeah. Temporary, this is a temporary thing, right? Yeah. I'm not going to yeah. stick around. I'm just trying to lure you in to satisfy me for a week or two, maybe a couple of months. But when I was in recruiting in, in Cleveland recruiting, I, I just wanted you to satisfy me for like 37 minutes, and I'm out. Yeah. And then you're out. Right. Okay, I got another one. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. For the next woman. It, this, I just had to show up because it could, you do that in a small town. You have the, the, the irresistible minimum. 
the bare minimum, but it looks good to a woman because she's been struggling. Boyfriend left her, you know, she's had, had a hard time in relationships. Nobody, nobody compliments her. You know, she feels lonely. She just got the kids. She hadn't been anywhere and she hadn't been out in a long time. Nobody yeah. got her nails done. <clears throat> so irresistible minimum. I'm, I'm listening. Go ahead, Pax. La ladies, be careful with that now. Uh, again, uh, <laughs> you, you got your, your friend uh, Vanessa here from the Life Path 22. Vanessa says, props to you, Leon, for shining the light. Um, and uh, April says, uh, we need to hear this. <laughs> okay, I just saw this one pop. <laughs> Somebody said, smooth operator. Dude, seriously, we got some shot A in the house all of a sudden. And that's from Ann. Ann, uh, thank you. I love you, Ann. You're a sweetheart. Uh, that's a good one, though. Uh, hoodwinked, a bamboozled. Somebody said, led astray. Uh, oh, that's pretty good. Astray, <laughs> bad. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's who I you, was, though. You guys are funny. Okay, so I got a couple of more. And then, then I, I just, questions have just popped up. I just noticed on the screen, I got to get to in just a moment before we let you, uh, uh, we take a commercial break and we come right back. Okay, here we go. Stop being with people that don't even like you is a statement you said in one of your, uh, in one of your uh, videos. Uh, what's your thoughts on that statement that you had made? Stop being with people that don't even like you. Yep. Right. So a lot of times we force ourselves to be with somebody that is not into us. Women at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, What's wrong with me? Why didn't he like me? I was the problem. I didn't do this right. I didn't do that right. A lot of times, you're just too good for those people. They're not going to Okay. All right. Hold on. No. Hold on. I got to no, I gotta do this, man. <laughs> okay. That's the winner of the day. Go ahead. A lot of times, they're just too good for them, right? Yeah. So I, I, I'm speaking specifically to women because it, I see it happen to, to them more. And it happens to men, too. Don't get me wrong. It happens to men. But women will... I was always halfway out, okay, in the beginning of the relationship. Women go in, boom, 100%, yeah, yeah. right? They're not, they should be time released. Women give too much up too soon, okay? Yeah. And you try to force a guy to like you. You try to force a guy to love you. You try to force a guy to, to, to do better in life. You try to force a guy to mature. You try to force a guy to be a man. All those things I could not be. Yeah. But you women are naturally nurturing beings. They want to build you up and hold you up and, and nurture you and rebuild you and put you on the pedestal and fix you and you're their problem. And six months later, he decides to go date somebody that's less than you. You know why? Comfort. She's not going to hold me accountable. Yeah. You're going to hold me accountable. You're a woman. You're yeah. beautiful. I want the hot girl. Hot girl don't mean nothing to me. Hot girl is temporary. A woman is elegant, virtuous. Yep, classy. Right? Yeah. Classy, right? Yep. Style, pizzazz. She has yep. a future. She has focus. Okay. She cares. She's uplifting. The hot girl sees the world <laughs> side out. Yeah. But grows from the outside in because everybody sees her face, her boobs, billion. Yep. But the beautiful woman sees the world from the outside in, but grows from the inside out. A real voluptuous yep. type of uh Beautiful, elegant, self-serving, righteous woman, and and a, and a and a man. We're not talking about someone who hasn't passed the bloom of youth, a, a young a young boy, but an actual man will will sense that almost like a shark can smell blood in the water. You know what I'm talking about? And it's in yeah. a woman to go like, why is he giving me all these compliments? Because because there's nothing else that's messing up his sensor sensory. He's picking up on. Oh my goodness, you've got something. Yeah, and right. that woman, will, because she's never heard it before, didn't have a dad around or, or any good male role models, she's going like, why is he giving me compliments? Because you can go find yourself a... He's technically saying, you can probably really go out and get yourself a really good man. And the woman will be thinking, no, I can't. You know, I've had nothing but losers. And go like, okay, you were better than they were. That's why. Exactly. And so these women, specifically and men too, but it's always the women that I notice, it's, it's like they try to make this person into who they want yeah. and not person wants to be if they want to remain who they are but they try they want to, to stay in the street they want to stay in the street and then women, <laughs> the guy the... yeah i've seen some beautiful women that own their own businesses got a I've, business plan, i've seen it too yeah ours and they're single right and they like you know but i can't find you can find a guy it's like 
Why? This is what they say. Why am I attracting these guys? No. <laughs> Why are you selecting no. these guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like, that's a that's a that's a whole nother show that that I think we're gonna have to plan that in the future, man. We're just gonna have to do a Zoom live, man, and, and we're just gonna have a, a show on why don't I selecting uh, that type of a man uh, because often it's not seeing the the excellent qualities that that person may have in themselves. And uh, maybe they never really had anybody tell them that. Okay, I gotta, re I gotta, I gotta do this, man. People are gonna turn on me because I keep getting more questions. And everybody, hold on here. How did you begin to change your behavior and why? That's coming from uh, "I'm My Motive." Wait, say that again. Uh, how did you begin to change your behavior and why? I think is the rest of that question there. I began to change my behavior when I realized that I was still sick, right, mentally. I'm getting older, right? I'm, I'm, I'm still mature, I'm immature as an older guy. Um, I was still wasting a woman's time. I didn't have any, I didn't have a purpose. I had children, I wanted to be a better example. I was leading sailors. I wanted to be a better example. I want to be a better example for God. God has always had me all my life, and I use God. You know, I, I I took God for granted. And I got tired of doing that, Pax, or whoever asked the question. I mm -hmm. got tired of a foul life. I got tired of being disrespectful. I, yeah. I got tired of uh, of hurting. I got tired of having headaches, stomach aches. I got tired of being mm -hmm. lonely. I, I was lonely. Mm -hmm. I got tired of it. And I knew that I could be a better person for a good woman. You know, I knew I want to travel with my girl. I want to do things. I don't want to yeah. spread myself thin. I was spread myself thin for what? Trying to trying to appease all these women, make myself available to all these women. No, I got tired, and I got tired of wasting a woman's time. I got tired of not being honest, not having character, integrity, those those core values. I got tired of missing them. I got tired of letting my dad down, even though my father died in 1999. I got tired of not living up to my dad. My dad was very monogamous. I studied and learned about, a lot about my dad after he died. Mm -hmm. I became very promiscuous, but I was influenced by promiscuous people. I was influenced by devilish people that I was attracted to that mm -hmm. lifestyle. And so I just got, I got tired to answer the question. I got tired of not living right. And I got tired of forsaking, not, not living right by God. Gotcha. Here, I'm going to throw another one to you here. Now I'm just going to read whatever I got here. Uh, why suddenly withdraw the sex and then uh, flinch uh, when the woman goes to kiss you after three years? I value your opinion, please. Best. Uh, oh, no, best live to date. Oh, thank you. That was very kind of you. Uh, I appreciate that. That's from uh, Great uh, great Mom 1717. Please forgive me if I said it wrong. Uh, but uh, that's the question there. Why suddenly withdraw, sex, so forth. Go ahead. Okay, so the question is... Oh, sorry. I just got rid of it. <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, uh, you withdrew uh, the sex, and uh, she went to go kiss you, but you would still flinch after being with her for three years. Uh, why was there no emotional connection overall? I think that's what she's kind of leaning toward for you to say one more time. Why was there no emotional connection with uh, your previous girlfriend at the time? Oh, she said why there was no more. Oh, because I started thinking, you know, she wants to get married. I'm not the right guy for her. If I marry her, it will be because she wants to get married. I didn't want to lose her. But I want to lead her on. I don't want to be her boyfriend when she wanted me to be her husband, and I couldn't be her husband. Wow, that's so, that's actually pretty deep, dude. Yeah, I, I wanted her to, to to be happier with somebody else than she was with me because I knew I couldn't make her happy at that yeah. level. Level. She deserved I mean, deserve a great husband. It just wasn't gonna be you. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't the right husband for her. Let me let me see what else we got here. Uh, do you feel a sense of peace? in your life now that you shared uh, your story. That's from, uh, it looks like Lanny Cakes one. Yeah, I feel um, not only peace, but clarity. Not only peace and clarity, but happiness. You know, I feel like a little kid in a relationship. I feel like a, 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 a healthier, I'm very healthy mentally, relationship wise, as my relationship health is on point. I'm a better listener now, I'm more, I'm fair. I'm honest, you know, I don't get, I'm not quick to get angry. You know, I'm okay with being wrong. Before I was like, huh, she, huh, huh. walk, go drink, go smoke, I'm out of here. Go flirt with somebody. 
make myself feel better. But um, all of that was like, a, I got rid of the monster. I had a monster. I had demons in me, Pat. Yeah. Yeah. Demons, well, I, had it. I got to throw you some more here. Hopefully we can get to everybody's here. Uh, Becoming Feminine Forces says, please add the question to the live. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody, all right. Somebody saying that there. I'm going to read another one here. Uh, that verifies for me what I felt from my ex. This is from uh, Great Mom 1717. I felt like he chased his childhood sexual abuse experience almost as a young teenager. So yeah. he was he was abused. Do you got the question there? I don't know if you understood there. Uh, so that's something that she experienced with her ex that uh, he was still being, as it were, haunted or chased by his childhood experience and brought that into their relationship. And that goes, that goes, that goes for, for a long time until you fix it. Because, Pax, my babysitter had golden brown hair, right? My mm -hmm. baby wore red lipstick. That stuck with me for a long time. Wow. Okay. It was that's a thing. Red, that's interesting. Red lipstick, colorful lipstick even now, it's not a trigger. I like colorful lipstick on my girl. But red lipstick was a trigger for me for a long time. If I see it on a woman, it was like... Yeah, caught your eye. Yeah, she could be skinny, with some weight, short. Didn't matter. That no. just happened to caught your eye. Yeah, the no red matter what. connected to me physically. Got it. Got and it. Uh. Woman. So, yeah, I had triggers, but I had to process those things. Uh, oops, hold on a second here. Uh, did you always label her crazy for accusing you for things that you were actually doing? Yeah, because I had to make her think and feel like she was crazy, but I was actually crazy. I knew it, but she didn't know it. I want her to know that she was crazy, not me. So okay, I was hold on. No, wait, dude, come on. Did you just you didn't just say that. You actually knew you were crazy. Mm -hmm. So she literally called you crazy. And I'd be like, Leon, okay. Leon you crazy. And you're going like, oh, yeah, okay. But no, it's really you. But you knew you were crazy. And then I would ramp it up with my disrespect and my disobedience and my treatment of her to make her like, oh, no, you're not crazy. You're, you're kind of mean. No, but you call me crazy. Now what is it? Am I mean or crazy or evil? Uh, now you're the one crazy because you don't know what I am. So I had to refer <laughs> I know. It was pretty Dude, seriously. Dude, man. I gotta find you a producer, man. We gotta make you a movie. Hey, we I gotta I got somebody, uh Anastasia. Uh she she's making a documentary. I think you need to be in it, man. She she gonna release it next year. You need I'm gonna you two gonna have to get together. She's gonna have to interview you and put you in the documentary, man. You might have to be the first one they have in the documentary to start the whole thing off. <laughs> All right, yeah. so here we go. I got I gotta try to get everybody in so nobody's gonna go crazy here. Um let's see here. Dun dun dun. What did it take for you, Leon? The question is to realize what you were doing. That's from uh, I'm my motive. What did it take for me to realize what I was doing? Yep. I knew I knew what I was doing um, back in 1987 when I saw my first psychiatrist. Hmm. I had to go to the psychiatrist because I was on the USS Stark. They got hit by two missiles and 37 mm -hmm. died. I had to go get to recover the bodies. <clears throat> But I knew what I was doing when I was deployed and sleeping with women overseas <laughs> unprotected, um, cheating, lying. I knew what I was doing before I joined the Navy. But it, when I joined the Navy, I was like, you know, these demons hadn't really come out yet. But when, they, when I joined the Navy, they started coming out when I went overseas. And, they, you know, we just had easy access to women <clears throat> all over the world. And it was just like a big, long sex party for years. So I knew what I was doing when I could block out um, how I felt, when I could suppress my feelings, and I knew I did something wrong, but I act like it wasn't wrong, and I Got knew it. I was with all those women, and I could act yeah. like I was with all those women. It would go from five to zero, just to make myself feel better, and then tell my girl, I ain't sleep with nobody three, 30 days ago, you know? I knew then I had a problem. So that was in 1987 <clears throat> when I saw my first psychiatrist. I was 21 years old. So I've been well versed in this narcissism stuff. I just never wanted to talk about it. I never told anybody. The psychiatrist told me what I was in '87. I had never heard of it, and never heard of it. Never. Wait, wait in '87, how old were you in '87 for the psychiatrist? Twenty years old. Wow. Now, now, when it comes when it comes to your videos, your your Instagram page, 
I'm sorry, I didn't even ask. Is there you have other avenues in which people can reach out to you? Your Instagram page. Tell everybody your Instagram page real quick here before we come back. I inspire one O N E, and it's a problem on there not right now because I follow everybody, and now uh -huh. I've been following and it, it won't follow back. I follow and it's like I just sent them an email to say, hey, what's going on? Why can't I, I come? I can't follow anybody. But Instagram is I inspire one O N E. I inspire one. I'm on TikTok as Leon R Walker Jr. and on Facebook as Leon R Walker Jr. Excuse me. I'm on LinkedIn as Leon R Walker Jr. They can Google me. All everything okay. is on Google my books and stuff and videos that I, and I'm on, uh, I have my YouTube channel that's doing okay now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm all over, but they can Google me and, it, you know, I've done some, t some, um, I was on some TV shows in Cleveland 2019 when I did my book tour, a uh, bunch of podcasts. So I've been around for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was, I wasn't going to call you old, man. I was just gonna say you've been around for a long time. Oh. I can't call you. I can't call you old because you're younger than me, man. <laughs> like way younger than me. So we, we good. I better yeah. not bring up it. That's the last time I bring up age. But but uh, I I've got my I got my senior citizen car a long time ago. Uh, what'd you say you are right now? You you fifty five? What how old are you? Fifty five. Fifty. Oh yeah, I remember those a long time ago for me, man. Yeah. So so uh, I'll meet you. I'll meet you at sixty, man, when you get there. Yes, so, sir. So so so. But other than that, you too young, man. You looking? Uh, I give you thirty eight. I well, give you thirty seven, thirty eight. I'm gonna tell you something. All this started changing when I started thinking differently and being fair and honest and open and being real. Uh, my sickness level went down. My headache started Good. going a little bit. My anxiety. I have severe PTSD along with NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, uh, mood disorders, uh, everything. Um, yeah. But when I started thinking clearly and treating people better, being nice, and you know what, Pax, when I, when, when I stop letting things just upset me, I don't get like, you mother... I don't do that. Yeah. I read the people. I listen. Okay, baby, you right. I laugh a lot. My father, <laughs> right? And so I had to <laughs> my family, many of my families would start started dying in the sixties for pancreas wow. cancer or uh, wow, and alcoholism and all that. My mother died in, in two thousand twelve from addicted to crack. So I started looking at these things like you know I run a lot. I'm around good people. I do yoga. Yeah. I listen to music. I got a dog. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> no, I like the way you stuck the got a dog in it because it makes a difference for a guy, don't it? It I makes a difference. Well, let me see. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. I didn't know. Okay. You got the dog. What's the dog's name? They're like Angel. They're like, how come you don't have a pit bull or a hyena? <laughs> oh man, let the beetle. All right, dude. Seriously, uh, this has been the best. Uh, somebody on here says, <laughs> "You ready for? Oh, get ready for this one, man. I'm gonna read it to you now." I'm ready. Somebody is telling me, uh, they say, uh, "Paxton, please bring Leon back for a weekly segment." That's from Becoming Feminine Forces. You lit, so you're gonna take over the network, man. Uh, my daughters and I started this network. It, that's go ahead. Start people, man. So we're working on some things too, packs. I'm working on um doing a book course. I'm good. I, well, you tell your people, but I I know we gotta go. I wrote a book in March about narcissism, packs, and I, I honest to God, I came home in March. A friend gave me a book called The Five Love Languages a year ago. I never read it. Okay. I came home in March, picked it up. And I heard God say, hey, you need to write a book the opposite of the love languages, right? Mm. So I wrote a book in March called The Seven Loveless Traits, okay? Okay. And I had to go get it edited and expound on it, expound on it, expound on it. It's going to come out in December, but I, this is the first time I announced it. But December, I was December of this year is going to come out, okay. The Seven Loveless Traits, the opposite yeah. of the... Because we don't talk about, for instance, your love language may be communication, right? Yeah. If you're with somebody that has the opposite of that, bad communication or a lack of communication, that puts your relationship on the you're gonna be off kilter because you're not talking. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm doing a book about I'm doing a lot of things, man. I'm doing a lot of things. Okay. Um I'm looking forward to it and um we're gonna go to commercial break, everybody. We'll be right back in about ten minutes or thereabouts. And uh Leon and I will Leon and I will be back. And when we come back, I'm not gonna tell you, you just gotta come back. Shoot. <laughs> Just come back. Just come back. I'll see you in a little bit, my friend. Thank All you, right. everybody. See you later.